Now that we've covered rope, let's talk a little bit about knots. As I mentioned, we don't have our dual action locking snap ring on here, nor do we have our fall arrest pack on the end of this. We have to create that when we use this better quality rope. This will be more expensive than our safety bucket, but it will be better quality. The most common knot used in this type of application, whether it be for lifeline anchorage, for rescue work, for any kind of tower work, for roof work, the most common knot is called the figure eight on a bite. Now I want to make a point here about knots. Let's say this rope does indeed have a minimum breaking strength of 5,000 pounds. That's 5,000 pounds pulling tensely like this. I'm going to go over here to the edge of the roof. As soon as this is laid tight on the roof, and now I am pulling that rope over that sharp edge, I have now reduced the minimum breaking strength of that rope by approximately 50%. That might be a worse case, but I think it's pretty close. Because right here is now a weak point. At this point, that's going to be a break point right there. I've weakened my rope by up to 50%. Now, because of just the position it's in, I now have a minimum breaking strength of 2,500 pounds. There's something else that does a similar thing to bring it over the ridge of the roof, and that is tying a knot in a rope. When I tie a knot in a rope, I don't care what kind of knot it is, and you pull that thing tight, now I've got bends, tight twists, I've got rope rubbing on itself. Every place there's a knot, I have now weakened the strength of the rope. This is called knot efficiency or relative knot strength. Some knots will only have a 40% knot efficiency, meaning that once you tie that knot in there now, the minimum breaking strength of the whole system is only 40% of the minimum breaking strength of the rope. So when we are knotting in a rope, we want to keep a couple things in mind. One, it should be easy to tie. Two, it should be easy to untie. Three, it should hold and grip properly so that it doesn't slip out. And four, it should have as high of a knot efficiency as possible. This is why the figure eight on a bite is probably the most used knot in this type of an application for putting on an anchor point at, at the end of any rope. The knot efficiency of the figure eight on a bite when properly tied is upwards of 80% or maybe even a little bit more. So that's pretty doggone good to only lose 20% of your minimum breaking strength on your rope. So let's go through the figure eight on a bike. Some people call it the figure eight loop. First of all, I'm gonna show you just a plain and simple figure eight knot. The figure eight knot, now let's look at a half hitch. A half hitch, I go around the back and I come in from the back. This is a half hitch. Horrible knot, we don't wanna use that knot. The figure eight knot goes around the back all the way back to the front and then through. I went all the way around the back, back to the front, and then through, and you can see why they call this the figure eight. So this is the way we are going to route the rope as we tie this knot. We're gonna make a loop like this. We're gonna go all the way around the back and back to the front, and then pull through that loop we made, and there is our figure eight knot. Now we wanna make, this is no good, we can't anchor to that, we want to make what's called a figure eight on a bite. Well, what in the world is a bite? B-I-G-H-T. This is a bite. When I fold the rope over like this, no crosses, just keep the two lines parallel, this is a bite of rope right here. What I want to do now is I want to use this whole bite, this dual line, these two parallel lines, to make my figure eight. And then we're going to talk about properly dressing a knot. Now I'm going to leave myself, the, the long end out here is called the standing end. This end right here, I want to leave enough free rope so I can show you another knot and something to make this even more secure called a barrel knot. So here's our bite. I'm going to take that bite, B-I-G-H-T. I'm going to make that loop I showed you before. I'm going to come all the way around the back, back to the front and I'm going to poke it through, but I am not going to pull it tight yet. 
I want to make sure that this rope is not twisting over itself inside. I want to make sure that it's properly dressed, which means I want the rope to follow all the way around. Now see right there, it's starting to cross itself right there. I'm going to give it a little twist to take that out, crossing itself right there. So I want to bring this around to the inside, crossing itself there. I want to fold that over like that. I want to get all the, the crossovers out of this knot. Once I have the cross, oh gee whiz, I got another crossover. Crossover there, crossover there. Give that a twist. There we go. Now I should be good. There we are. Now this is a figure eight on a bike, which is properly dressed. The lines stay parallel all the way around and they don't twist on themselves inside the knot. If that knot were to twist on itself inside the knot, I would not have my 80% knot efficiency. So I give it a good strong tug. I now have a good figure eight on a bite, no twists inside of the knot, 80% knot efficiency. This will hold very well. Now, just in case it might possibly slip, and this is the reason I have the extra line out here, I want to do another knot. It's called the barrel knot, and I want to actually tie the barrel knot around the standing line. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the standing line on top. I'm going to bring this little tag line up here on the bottom, and I'm going to wrap away from myself and back toward myself two times away from myself and around and then back this way around a second time and back up to me. Now I've got two loops there. I'm going to stuff that end through the two loops and I'm going to pull it good and tight. Now I want you to see this knot, the barrel knot. On this side there's a crisscross. On this side they're parallel and this knot will hold extremely well it's also sometimes referred to as a stopper knot. That barrel knot is a very common stopper knot. If for some reason this all slipped, that barrel knot would slide up to there and it would stop this thing from slipping. Hence, we're just added another okay, level. So here we go. We're going to do this one more time, slowly to demonstrate. I make my bite on the rope. I make a bite, keep the lines parallel. Here I go. I'm going to take that bite wrap it around my hand one time and over. I want to bring it around the back and all the way back to the front and then stuff it through, but I do not want to pull it tight yet. I want to dress the knot. That means the ropes have to stay parallel to one another. Coming here, it's coming up there. I'm starting to get across over there, so I'm going to push this down under there, twist this back there like that, it looks to me like I have avoided all of my crossover. Oh, I got one right there. Pull that back in. There we go. No crossovers. I now have a really nice figure eight on a bite with no crossovers within the knot. Now I want to put my stopper knot on, the one known as the barrel knot. Standing line on top. Grab this little tag line here. Go over away from me one time and back, moving in that direction toward my hand, over again and back. Now I have two loops. I'm going to take this free end, stuff it through the two loops that I created, and I'm going to pull that tight now, like this, and I can recognize my barrel knot because it has the crisscross on one side, parallel on the other side. I now have a knotted rope that has 80% of its original minimum breaking strength. This is the most common setup for anchoring the end of a lifeline. This is my preferred method. Good Kern Mantle static rope, 5,000 pound minimum breaking strength, figure eight on a bite, barrel knot for a stopper. Now we have to figure out how we're going to get this onto our anchorage. Okay, I'm going to go grab a carabiner.